there is a lady who's joined us and she's been very, very vocal on social media recently about things that are happening on Ndemi Road in Nairobi. Cheratich say, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How Twice you doing? Twice over. Imagine. I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The last time you were here, you were campaigning to be the senator, senator yes, for yeah. Elgia Marquet County. Mm -hmm. Since well, then, you gave us a blackout. Well, I needed a bit of a sabbatical, and obviously I'm not the senator of Elgia Marquet <laughs> County, or else you'd be calling me Madam Senator. Yes. But uh, yes, yes, no, I took a bit of a break, but mm. I have not gone anywhere. Mm. And my mouth is bigger than ever. <laughs> So it's eating more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Karibu sana to the conversation. We'll talk Thank about you. very many things that you've been talking about lately on social media. But to welcome you to the conversation, CT has the day's proverb, mm. courtesy of the Pan-African Bank, Echo Bank. Uh -huh, CT? Yes, this is our final proverb from the Kingdom of Morocco. Mm. Lies have no legs. Lies have no legs. <laughs> Cheryl. What's your interpretation of this one? Lies have no legs. Well, I suppose the speed with which uh, lies move, you you need you need a bit more than legs. You need to be <laughs> you need to teleport. You need to be able to f uh, move through walls and just be everywhere at the same time. Be omnipresent mm. if you are a lie. You know. So, it. Uh, I think it. I don't know. I think it has something to do with with uh, with the pace at which lies move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And legs are a bit limiting. Very well said. Oh, there's also the other version of it, which, well, uh, maybe another interpretation of it, which could be that a lie once told will not spread because it has, it's immobile. But it latches onto a being that has legs. That's when it spreads. That's an interesting one a as well. A lie without the aid of somebody with legs Stays where it is. So, like a story doesn't spread unless somebody, somebody spreads, spreads it. it. Yes. Uh -huh. Or a third interpretation: uh. it really has no foundation, because as they say, the truth will out. And what about a lie? Will it mm. out? Mm. Will it dissipate? Mm -hmm. And for it to actually be given relevance, it has to be perpetuated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah. And that's where it can't move and his own comes in. Somebody has to keep propagating it for it to have traction. Because uh -huh. mm. left on its own, the underbelly will, will soon be revealed. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. I think I feel like I live and we live in a space. Why I say it has no legs, it just moves is, is sometimes you don't even need that one or two or three people. It's, no. it's uh, with social media, this hmm. age of the internet. It doesn't need legs in that sense. So that's how I was looking at it and saying, mm. as soon as you put it out there, if you if you drop a lie right here now, it's going to move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. does not need our legs. But I understand. And I actually, I think that's a, a better way even of looking at it because you can disempower the lie mm -hmm. by not letting it move and eventually the truth will out. Mm. Yeah. This is the beauty of Proverbs and this is the beauty of interpretations mm -hmm. because all these interpretations are relevant. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, Chero. Yes. Nairobi is a growing city. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. The population of Nairobi, as of the last census, was 4 million at night, 5 million in the day, or is it the other way around? Of 4 mm -hmm. million and then 3 million. The, no, the numbers was it 3 and 4 was it 4 and 5? The the night, they yes. do, but was it 3 and 4 or was it 4 and 5? Four. Well, I prefer 4 and 5. 4 and 5 okay. sounds four and five. more like it. So yeah. 5 million during the day and 4 million at night. Four million sleeping in Nairobi, they need to sleep somewhere. And we've been seeing a development of estates. And those that were once quiet, lush estates with lush gardens, half acre. We're still Sweet. using the half acre. Mm. But then we have also now taken them upwards. The acres moved up. Yes. And you're one of the people who is not happy about this whole development. Why? Thanks so much. You know, uh, when I was thinking about what I wanted to share today, based on the conversations that have been uh, running amok on X, uh, for uh, the artist formerly known as uh, Twitter, the artist, is it X, the artist formerly known mm -hmm. as? Twitter. Yes. Known as Twitter. Mm. Um, it's been interesting, the types of, of, of feedback and conversations ongoing. And one of the things I want to be very clear about is this is not about class. Mm. 
This is not about elitism. You have those people who come and say, oh, you leafy green suburban people yeah. are complaining. You don't want people to have houses. You don't want people to, also you don't want the city you to, you, you, want, you don't want them to live where you live. And it is not about that. What I think we're driving at is urban planning has been sacrificed on the altar of greed and corruption. Because when we talk about growing cities, we are four to five million, four million at night, five million during the day. Look at other big cities, as people are always talking about big cities. Go to New York City. Has anybody touched Central Park? <laughs> Central Park is available for, to everyone who lives in the city and beyond. It may be a densely populated city with boroughs and so on and so forth, but there has been thought given to urban planning. And the fact that everybody, whether you live in pipeline, they make it a pipeline versus Kilimani debate, mm. debate, and it's not. Mm. Whether you live in pipeline or Kilimani, you deserve to have green spaces. You no. deserve to have sidewalks. Pause, pause, general. You know, and, for, and so, for those, sorry, for go those, ahead. For those who are not on X yeah. or on social media yeah. and haven't caught on, or yeah. maybe they are, but they yeah. haven't uh, seen this conversation. Yes start from the beginning okay so what happened is uh, i live i live in kilimani and by the way kilimani is not that little area of hurlingham and yaya and all the way kilimani comes as far down as railways uh, Haile Selassie. Mm -hmm. it goes all the way she across past saint andrews arboretum state house is even in kilimani you go to ring road uh, westlands come all the way up oloitoktok all the way Gitanga Road, all the way up to Kingara Road, dip across to the junction mm. and come down Gong Road past Nairobi Hospital. Kilimani is vast. And it is there is Upper Hill on one side, there's Kilesha on the other side, and you know, and so on and so forth. So I live in Kilimani. And over the years we have watched high rises mushroom. And you say, okay, there's one. I thought this is a four zone uh, uh, neighborhood, four story zone neighborhood. You see one? seven stories, eight stories, nine stories, 14 stories. Next thing you know, Wood Avenue, which was called Wood Avenue for a reason, mm. is not Wood Avenue anymore. Mm. Cement Avenue. It's Cement Avenue. It's hot concrete jungle, wall to wall, beacon to beacon. And I've been watching these developments. And you know I'm an active citizen. And when you see something that's not quite right, you start asking yourself, who are these people? Who are these developers? Where is all this money coming from? And don't tell me it's to cater for rural to urban migration because it's not. There is affordable housing that the government is busy with. And that is not the affordable housing. So this is how the story evolved. And right next to where uh, my, my business is, we have a seven tower, 18 story, three stories down, 18 stories up, seven towers of 18 stories each to be about 400 apartments. And last year, along with neighbors, we said, what is this? Where was the change of user? Where's the public participation? Where are the plans? To date, we have never seen the plans. And they used Kifua. I was assaulted by the contractor about a year ago, uh, the, the local contractor that they used to excavate, to salvage and excavate. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to the police station, have the OB and, and, you know, got my P3 form and so on and so forth. When I said, what are you guys doing? They fell trees. It was a one acre plot, one two acre plot. The trees, the mugumos that went down, the trees that have been there for decades, even more than a century, went beacon to beacon. And with the neighbors, we said, what is going on? We went to court. We're at the National Environment uh, Tribunal right now. And the matter is still ongoing. And then recently, and this is what triggered now what, what we're talking about. Mm. Recently, we saw a little uh, questionnaire being passed around the neighborhood, just across from where I am. On another maybe half acre plot, there's a proposal for three or four uh, towers, 18 stories each. <laughs> That's what they do. They start doing that. I said, who are these people? Mm. Fast forward. So what was the questionnaire? The questionnaire was saying, what do you think about this? Questionnaires are opinions. That's not public participation. It's a part of collecting your data to show that you have ticked some boxes. But that's not public participation. But these guys at least tried mm. to, to pass around question. questionnaires. At least they made you aware. Yes. A plan. And they say that there is a plan. Can we meet? But when did they set the meeting? For next Thursday the 1st, when everyone is at work. That's <laughs> what they do. And then no one turns up. And they go and, and they, they say, say we, tried. We, we tried, we've mm -hmm. held public participation, we have gotten our feedback, and if they see the questionnaires are not so favorable, sometimes they pad them with other, uh, other questionnaires from ghost uh, residents of that neighborhood, and they go ahead. So I looked and I said, what is happening? Fast forward a few days later, we see the emergence of the Chinese Property Developers Association. I said, Allah, 
And we all know it's an open secret that Kilimani construction is run by Chinese contractors who have now become property developers. Mm -hmm. And these property developers have as created this association where they say we're going to do good, we're going to return to the community. And you look at Haderu Road, you look at Ozaya Road, you look at Mbazi, you look at Ndemi, you look at Wood Avenue, you look at Lenana, you look everywhere you look. You look at Likoni Lane, which is an active crime scene. Mm -hmm. as we speak with some Alina developers. I mean, if we have time, I can take you through what happened and what is happening now, where the community is organized, they do the public participation, they push back, this is a cul-de-sac, you're not going to construct here, they send them away, somehow these guys end up getting permissions, mm. the, all the permits that they require. And uh, finally, um, after, after launching the association mm. and going to visit Governor Sakaja in his office, the following day, and this is a matter of public record, I'm not making up stories, mm. the following day, all permits were, 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 were issued. Can and they are excavating mm. now as we speak, and it's going to be 17 stories, I don't know how many oh, blocks, yeah. on a small piece of land, cul-de-sac, neighbors can't drive in and out, they are going to sink a borehole right next to the river. Who does that? Let me ask you a question, Jeremy. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's chaos. It's looking chaos. At, looking at how areas mm. are planned, mm. even with whatever, you know, like a days ago planning there is, that there's an allowance of certain things to be, like you said, forced, mm. this, the cap is four stories. Yes. And you don't dream this up. This it's is there. documented. It exists. It's, it it's, exists. it's a law. Yeah? It's a, it's a, no it's more a than four stories. Yeah. So somebody in an authority in the city said, this is what is going to be. For more than that to happen, right, for it to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, till 17, somebody is approving it. Exactly, is approving. Who is approving and why? You see, this uh, comes, uh, when you come to the county, it's the city planning department. Mm. Yeah, the, si the physical, sorry, the physical planning department, and it's the development control within that physical planning department that issues the permit. Mm. You also need permits from NEMA mm. saying you have done your environmental impact assessment, you have talked, you have heard from the from the residents, they have told you this, you have you have you have uh, you have incorporated their suggestions, ideas and so on and so forth, ticked all those boxes, you have gone back to the drawing board, come back again, call. You know public participation is supposed to happen three times. Mm. Three times. And you have, and I said, let me speak to, to, to some architects to really understand what exactly is supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Because you ask, it's the anatomy of corruption in this city. I asked and I said, number one, you have to have a master plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have to search and make sure you have correct and legitimate ownership. You're not going to be in any kind of dispute. Then you go for change of use. And when you're going for change of use, you, dis you, you, you first of all establish whether you're going for low impact, middle impact or high impact. Low impact means maybe I'm building a bungalow. Mm. And that's not really realistic anymore. If you have a half acre piece of land, even I wouldn't build a bungalow. You try to see how to maximize the space and create more dwellings and, you know, and so on and so forth. Mm. So you're looking more at middle and high impact, four stories. And once you have uh, looked at change of use, not that tiny little notice that they stick on a gate mm -hmm. somewhere. It has to be really big and loud. Then you look at the infrastructure. Do we have roads? Do we have sewage? Kilimani is very septic tank based. Mm. The sewage lines are not enough. And so if you don't have sewage lines, if you're using septic tanks, you need to ask, you need to push and lobby for all these things to be in place. It's not the converse. What's happening now is people are coming in, they are building beacon to beacon, which is also illegal, mm. because you cannot do more than, according to the law, mm. um, is it 35%? 35% is how you're supposed to build and the rest should be green in this four zone area. Mm. Let's say we even argued 50-50. Right now what is happening is it's 100% beacon to beacon construction. 400 apartments where 10 people used to live without the necessary infrastructure in place. Mm -hmm. And when you don't do that, it's a case of good vibes and inshallah everything will work <laughs> out. Your lights begin to flicker, overflow of sewage, your water trucking. The, the, the denseness of the population, the mm. sun you never see, people are in darkness. And this is, this is a problem. When you look at pipeline, it is a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a problem throughout the city. This is not a Kilimani problem.
It is a problem of rogue contractors and developers who have decided to maximize every square inch and circumvent. So when you have done all of these things, then you start your public participation. Mm. You go into public participation, you call the neighbors. When it's medium and high impact, you're supposed to call the neighbors. Say, we want to build 10 stories. They'll say, Allah, this is a four-story zone. Why 10 stories? Mm. There has to be that robust debate. Mm. Then if you ask them questions, how are you going to deal with parking? How are you going to deal? This is a narrow, small road. If you suddenly have a thousand additional cars, how is that going to work? You ask all those questions and the developer, it is incumbent upon the developer to go back to the drawing board. Mm. Come back, go back and forth. And finally, when it is all done and we have said, yes, good, we're happy. Where do you go? To the, to, the, to, the, to the city, to the physical planning department, mm. and you uh, get your permit from the, per from the development control. Mm. You also go to NEMA, and NEMA issues you permits. It is the converse now. You just go, you go straight there, it's a fait accompli, you're reverse engineering, you come, you tick a few boxes, next thing you know, the ground movers are coming, the excavators, you, the salvagers are told, come, cut everything, take the trees. Mm -hmm. When I saw Moguma trees go down, I wept real tears and I said, what is going on? The place is hot. Go to Kilimani. Go to Wood Avenue. When I was a child and we would run up and down and play with friends on Wood Avenue, it was shady. Mm. It was cool. You don't realize that as you're destroying the trees in, 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 in Kilimani, you're heating the city up. Not Let me ask Kilimani. you this question. So you see, there is a problem with procedure. It's not about... The uh, processes that you've mentioned, yes, right? Yes, yes. Has there been any change to those processes at all has no. there been a conversation that says for example that yes this area is zoned this way is there any conversation that has gone into dezoning kilimani for instance and saying so kilimani was previously this kind of zone only this kind of uh, population the size of land is half acre and above the number of uh, houses in a half acre unit would be x now let's change it is yes. there anything at City Hall that we can find that has started that conversation of dezoning this city? The conversations are ongoing, but here is the rub. Mm. If you dezone um, Kilimani and say it's no longer a four-zone neighborhood, four-story zone neighborhood, you can build 10, 18, 20, mm. 30, as high as you want to go. Mm. You know what that means? Those who have been part of the gravy train of kickbacks for the provision of permits will no longer eat okay no let's go step by step so the conversations have started are, Form, are they formal conversations i believe i'm like, not a, I'm, i don't sit i don't sit in the in in those meetings but from what i've heard from the kilimani project foundation mm -hmm. from other neighborhood activists that these conversations are ongoing but uh, they're not concluded are they they're not concluded and they will never be concluded this is my this is what i'm pushing back to you okay. they will not be concluded because if they're concluded it means that if Kilimani from today becomes a 10-story zone, what happens to those people who had built more than 10 stories prior to the dezoning of Kilimani? Mm -hmm. Either you bring those buildings down or you retrofit or you say we are going to forgive, we're going to provide amnesty to all of those yeah. who had built outside the zone. Mm -hmm. And we are saying absolutely not. But the other thing, alleged, you know, I always have to use alleged because you know how, how I end up getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, allegedly, Every story past the fourth story costs money. And the going rate is somewhere between three million and five million. Bribe. Yes, we do in different places. I'm not saying one particular person puts it in their pocket, mm. but that's the going rate, three to five million. So back of the envelope mathematics, just for argument's sake, if next to me you have seven towers of 18 stories each, let's not count the three below, let's count above ground. So from floor five to 18 Inclusive times seven mm -hmm. times five million. That is before they have even blinked. That's the kind of money that disappears. And what do they call it? The cost of doing business. And actually the purpose of being here today is to call out this Chinese property developers association because there are a bunch of contractors, even the guys who want to build right next to me, are the same Alina developments. All you have to do is read some of their letterheads and see these guys are one and the same. There's oak developments all around Kilimani. They're all these same 
types who have now come and laundered themselves, sanitized themselves, arrived to tell the governor, we love you, we love Nairobians. These are the people who work late into the night. They are allegedly very low wage payers for the hustlers who go and do Mjengo work there. They bring in their own materials. The engineers, the foremen, every, where do they come from? They are not even Kenyan. So even as you're talking about, they are generating Jero, jobs for Kenyans. Jero. So sorry. Are yes, there Kenyans who have developed more than four stories? In Absolutely. Mali? Okay. Absolutely. All of them have a permit of sort. Yes. They have a document, a genuine document, not a forged document. Yes. From City Hall, from NEMA. Yes. And from other regulators. They are all genuine. There is the National Construction Authority. Yes. That is aware of this. Yes. Okay? So they have not broken the law per se. They have. They have the requisite documents. They have. Because if I applied to NEMA but for, for a particular zone, is that not what we're saying? Yes, now? they have broken the law. The, so essentially, the, this area has the, already come under a particular zone, mm -hmm. and now it is being changed. Yes. Under what? Uh, under what um, specifications yeah. is it being changed? Who the is allowing this of, change? The issue is of the, the certificate. I see where Eric is going. Has broken the law. Mm. I, has the developer broken the law? Absolutely. By applying and receiving. A I'm sure City would give us a proverb saying, "How many? You you need two hands to clap." <laughs> so at the end of the day, for the city county, NEMA, all the issuing authorities to break the law, there was somebody else there clapping with mm. them. And that is the point we're making. They have seen a loophole and they're exploiting it. They know that we're susceptible to inducements. They know we're susceptible to bribes. They have seen it happen. They work it into their budgets. This is the opportunity cost, the cost of doing business in Kenya. And at the end of the day, Nairobians be damned. Mm. It doesn't matter that we have cut every last tree in Kilimani. And you ask, why am I specifically focusing on the Chinese? The Chinese have decimated Kilimani. And people say, oh, are you being a little bit xenophobic? Let me go to Beijing and cut one tree there. I will be executed that same day. I will never leave. Yeah. Let me go to Beijing and Not set up a Kenyan. Not because you're Kenyan, but because the government officer protect. who's supposed to do the job is doing the job. Yes, but we, I am not absolving them because yes. they are there and they take, they see the loopholes and they go for them. They give you donations. I've heard that even Sonko is an amateur compared to how they record conversations. You go, you sit with them. You will be recorded. You take one pen. They will document it. Take <laughs> Five million. Oh, you shall forever hold your peace. They That's, should record. They should we record. We need to know who is this. <laughs> <laughs> Cherishit say is an active citizen. She's here today. She's raising concern about what's happening in development in Nairobi as a whole with specific examples of what she has seen where she is. Kilimani. Very many apartments coming up. This area is supposed to be a four-story zone, according to what's documented in regulations. But of course, we know we have seen 17, 12, 13, 14, 16 stories. Times t many. Nine. Uh, so what's happening? Those are the questions we are asking. Have you raised this with City Hall? Yes, uh, with the governor, with the chief accounting officer of Nairobi County, who is Governor Sakaja himself. I have raised it directly. He doesn't take uh, my calls. I have uh, taken it to X and there's been a lot of debate on X this week. He has not interacted at all with any of those uh, messages and debates. He is absent. He is conspicuous by his silence. However, you will happily see him going to launch the Chinese Property Developers Association and tell them how wonderful it is. Welcome to the city. We shall facilitate you. But his voters the people who he swore to serve, he's not engaging with them. Where is he? Governor Sakaja Ukoapi? They didn't reach out to him through X. <laughs> they reached out to him through his office. Have you sent communication to the governor's office? Yes. Or there's a department in charge of planning. There's a department in charge of public participation and citizen uh, engagement. It has a CECM. It has a CO. Have you reached out to as those a, offices? As a member of the Kilimani like, Project Foundation, mm. we do that. The Kilimani Project Foundation is a fantastic network of actors who have said, and like I told you, Kilimani is big, so it's not a tiny little neighborhood, who have done all of this, reached out. Governor Sakaja left all Kilimani Project Foundation WhatsApp groups quietly in the dead of the night on 27th of December. Why? Shortly after that, the Chinese are in his office. And thereafter, he is launching the, 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 the property developers, the Chinese Property Developers Association. Immediately after, permissions are issued to this, develop, this company, Alina, on Likoni Lane. 
and the, the, the MD of Alina is the vice chair of the Chinese Property Developers Association. If this is not a cartel, what is? And you know, Dr. Willy uh, Mutunga, uh, retired Chief Justice, he, he engaged with the, with the tweet, with the X that I had put out, and he said, you know what? Great work, Chero. He said, China tells the world that it is different from the West. Like the West, China does not respect our constitution. Until we realize how enslaved our corrupt political leadership and the leadership of our institutions are, we will lose our country. He said, I once described our economy as a bandit one, ruled by national and international cartels. We are ruled by forces whose names don't appear on ballot papers when we vote. Those who entertain the idea that China will liberate the global south from the west should think again. And what he was basically saying is don't be fooled, don't be bamboozled by these benign, magnanimous gifts that we are given and we see mm. these constructions coming up and they say China, Kenya, Friendship, Association, etc, etc. I'm not a xenophobe. I'm a citizen of the world. I'm well traveled. I'm exposed. But I can tell and Chief Justice as well, retired, can tell that they don't mean well. This is a place to park your money. And Nairobians be damned. No matter what happens, you've put up your 18 stories. You have ruined that neighborhood forever. You have not improved the quality of life. You have not catered for rural to urban migration or affordable housing, as you're saying, because who's going to buy an apartment for 15M or 22M? That's not about rural to urban migration. This is not about allowing people from Kibra to move into Kilimani because the price, it, it's off. You saw the debates recently on the housing uh, levy and, and that they were saying, Allah, you want me now to start paying 21,000 when I was paying 1,000 before. Yeah. So when they give these stories, why is our leadership bamboozled into believing that they mm. actually mean well unless they haven't already drank that Kool-Aid? Okay. And this is what I keep saying. Sakaja, where are you, governor? Mm. We are holding you to account. And then people tell me on Twitter, what do you guys want? So you move to the suburbs. I'm like, when the suburbs hit Lake Magadi mm -hmm. and Namanga, will you tell us, move to Tanzania? Mm. You know, uh, at some point there has, to be, there has to be order so and there has to be common sense and there has to be rational. And we have no shortage, sorry, City, no shortage of professionals. Mm. You know, and, and when I look at the Architectural Association of Kenya, Engineers Board of Kenya, Institute of Quantity Surveyors, Kenya Institute of Planners, Institute of Engineers, of Kenya why are they keeping quiet where are they mm. where are they if there's Ken if there's Chinese Property Development Association where is the Kenya Property Developers Association Development um, uh, Developers Association and why aren't they saying anything are they complicit are they scared because I was even warned this money these people are dangerous I'm like look we live in danger every day and we live by the grace of God and we're protected to the extent possible mm. and we have to speak up and I'm like who is afraid to speak up are the professionals afraid the residents are not afraid there's an elderly couple off Dennis Pritt Road that collects has to collect used condoms being thrown over from these high rise that have surrounded their property. They have lost value. Uh, 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 an investment that was worth 30 or 40 million is now down to 10 to 15. And no, it's unchecked. It is unchecked. And people think, oh, it's just this, this middle class. You think people in pipeline are happy. Mm. It started there. They said, let's go to lower income neighborhoods, see whether we can jam pack them with high rises where kids have rickets. Mm -mm where you use flashlights during the day. Let's experiment there. And if it works, let's move to the leafy suburbs. Okay. And we keep moving and we and keep moving. moving. They're in Karen now. Now, Siti, ask your question. Or maybe they should take over Arboretum. Mm. And in Kilimani, we have security we're installations. Tema Yomate. Siti, ask <laughs> what, you. There's, <laughs> not a, there's not a tree that they have seen that they wouldn't <laughs> cut no. if given half a chance. Okay. Why are we blaming the Chinese? Because they are enablers. No. They are the enablers. enablers are us. No. Nope. Because we have laws, regulations, and you pointed out clearly, mm. there are zoning laws. You know, we've had strong members of this um, Planners Association, this studio, more than once, and we discussed some of these things with them. Huh? Mm. In fact, I was communicating with them, asking them to explain to me this zoning thing, how exactly it works. Mm. I have a scant understanding of it. Why am I saying this? Huh? You think this is a big issue. It is not a small issue. The AU headquarters in Addis Ababa, do you know who built it? Yeah, the Chinese. Precisely. Now, recently, there was an article in the papers where people are complaining at the AU headquarters that somebody was tapping 
and collecting information. And they found some sort of server in the basement somewhere. And I asked myself, what are you talking about? You let the Chinese build it. What they did you built expect? it for you from, from, from the ground up. What I, I mean, wh why are you making noise now? So you are naive enough to think that they were just building this thing for your welfare. AU, the headquarters of the African Union. You allow someone to build it for you. Then you want to complain later. President Kibaki brought the East here. Started off with this road. Mm. The Chinese are diligent builders. They're excellent at what they do. Their technology is very advanced. And you're right in saying, what is happening here they wouldn't do in their own country. You'll get shot. Mm. There's a law, you break it. Man, you're done for. Yeah. Okay? But who are the custodians of our laws? It's our people. Yeah. So if they're able to break the law, who is allowing them to break the so law? So somebody's allowing them to do this, Joe. Yes, and that's, yeah. that's my point. They can't operate here yes. without that permission having been granted. That's my point. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I, I agree with what you're saying. For example, raising concerns about the group of developers in Kilimani. That group of developers is not in South Sea. Have you seen South Sea? Yeah, we're coming to those. That group of developers <laughs> is not in Parklands. Have you seen Parklands? We're coming to Parklands. That group of developers is not in Pipeline. All right? Mm -hmm. Have you seen pipeline? I have. All those things that you raised, okay, do we have sufficient infrastructure to support this development of this density? Do we have sufficient planning? Do we have any... It's not happened. It's not happening. And it's not because the Chinese are bribing. It's because there are people who are issuing permits, whether yes. they've been bribed by a Chinese, by a Kenyan, by a Kikuyu, by a Luo, by a Kalenjin, by a Somali. They... There's somebody who is not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. In why that should sense, our attention 100% agree with you. And that's why I used the clapping hands. It, it, this hand is clapping. They're enablers of each other. There's a reason why the Chinese need to invest their money here. They're people who are not upholding the law. And we have voted them into positions of power and decision making. And this is why we're speaking up. We're like, if the law is clear, Nairobi County... Why are you letting this happening happen? And where does it start? And this unraveling of the thread, because I am 100% for accountability. If you find out who it is in development control that finally issued that permit, who is it in NEMA that signs off? Those are the people we should be going after. At the same time, I'm calling out the Chinese Property Developers Association and saying, Chungeni, muna ingia hapa? You come, you cut trees, you scoff at us, you work into the night. And you say even we have permission to work in the night. There is no such thing as license to work at night unless you're in road construction or you're doing what they call fit outs in offices, which is actually what they encourage because that's in the CBD in office buildings. So road construction or fit outs. Otherwise, this license to work at night, where did it come from? Because even if you're going to develop, even if we say, let Kilimani become an 18 story zone, you know, the way Upper Hill slowly converted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if we agree that that's the way we're going to go. Even if we had the necessary infrastructure in place, sewage, roads, etc., etc., you still have to follow the law in terms of start and stop times. These guys, my neighbors, start at 7, 6.30. Noise. They continue. 5 o'clock, they're supposed to stop. Everywhere around the country, you should stop construction at 5. 10 in the, 10 in the night, you'll still find them. And those are Django guys working late into the night. I want to ask how much are they even being paid. Mm. They work on Saturday. You're supposed to start 8, finish by 1. They work till 6 or 7 or 8 p.m. That's why they move like mad. You say they're efficient, they're good. They're breaking the law to move fast. Sunday, they're even found to be working and you're not supposed to work on Sunday. So even if everything was followed, there's still impunity and loopholes. That's why I call them all out there's without a, exception. There's a card but I agree with you. There's I agree card, with all of you. There's a card of employee in this country yes. called a watchman. Okay? We even have an authority now that is supposed to oversee how the affairs are managed. Hmm. A bold step was taken and there was a salary rise. Where I live, they are watchmen. They're still paid 7500 And they're not paid at the end of the month. They're paid on like the 15th of the following month. An authority. These are Kenyans. These companies are Kenyan. When you look at those watchmen, they are not slim because they have a dietary plan. Okay, they do. It's more like an absence a forced, of a... A forced yes, dietary plan. Yes, or they are constantly going to the gym and, and doing wonderful things. 
7,500 in Nairobi. What exactly are you supposed to do with that amount of money? You can't live. Uh, now, my point. You ask the question and I'm answering it. It's like an enabling environment for any manner of vice that somebody can conjure up has been created and it keeps being accelerated in this country. So everyone just looks at their little pocket and their own little area of enterprise and they just see enact something that has been nationalized. It's a national pastime. So when you find people, whether it's at City Hall, people who are in charge of buildings, whether it is NEMA, we've had gory stories of children being mutilated and dying and having disease that cannot be cured simply because there's a factory next to them that is spewing the sort of poisons and that has been authorized by NEMA. Hmm. So, where do we turn? Because you look everywhere, either the planners have given authority, either the National Construction Authority has looked every which way except where that building is. You talk about the Architects Association. Somehow they seem to have taken a vow of silence and all the other professionals that you're speaking about. A vow of silence. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, but, but, yeah. but these associations, they have people, they are prominent. What are they doing? Anything that we see happening isn't in isolation. And you're right with the, about the, the analogy of the clapping hands. The problem cannot be the Chinese. If the Chinese came here and there was a rule of law and they knew they would have to abide with it, they would have found a way of abiding by it. Or gone somewhere else where they don't have to Yes. Abide. If you Are look you? at other communities who offer us aid, I'm going to give the Japanese as an example. It will not happen. Their culture is completely different. They will not give a bribe, they will not take a bribe. You know, I, I, I want to just say, and, and one of the things I was thinking about is, is it starts with us. Yes. When you see, and, and it starts with us, but I am not absolving the Chinese. Please, today, we are not walking away with, Chero has agreed the Chinese are not the problem. Oh, no, I'm not but absolving I agree them with either. You. I agree with you that because of the hate we manifest, the disdain we manifest for each other, mm. Mm. and the, the class strata that we have created in this society, where lives in pipeline are less valuable than lives in current, they see the loopholes and they exploit them. If they saw us treat one another with respect, with dignity, with love, with care, if they did not find a nation of self-haters, they would not do what they're doing. Or what if they also found a situation whereby this same thing that's happening, because there's nowhere around the city that you will find today where this thing that you speak of is not happening. It's happening in South Sea. It's happening in South B. It's happening in Pipeline. It's happening in Siokimau. It's happening in Westlands West Park. Westlands Park, Raptor Park Road, it's happening Riverside everybody. Drive. So now imagine everywhere. if everybody, you talk about self-hate, look at the other side of it. Imagine if everybody felt that their voice combined with others mattered and that something could actually be done but to the point whereby folks are feeling really quite repressed that they cannot open their mouth and say look you know what this cannot be yeah. we're just going to take it and we'll buy water bottles because the pressure on the the system is terrible there's no sewage so let's come together and buy our own there's no you know so if people were to be able to come together and know that they do have number one strength in numbers and strength of voice because you are a citizen would we see that something would be different absolutely and this is one of my objectives as an active citizen mm -hmm. why do i call myself an active citizen i'm not the senator I'm not the governor. I'm not the, I'm a citizen of this country and I've chosen to be active. When we started Switch Off KPLC, when we started doing all we were doing, Linda Katiba, all of that, Humanity Kenya during COVID, it's because you say you're a citizen, but you're not going to keep quiet. And my hope is that I can inspire along with many other active citizens, enough citizens to understand that their voices count, their voices matter. I started this tweet saying, uh, Governor Sakaja, did you drink the Kool-Aid mm. by today? What type of legs has it gathered this, this week? Mm. Just on social media. So we can make a difference. And I tell people we have made a difference. Even with our energy justice, we're in the Court of Appeal now. It may be quiet because the, 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 wheels, the wheels of justice are turning. Are, are turning. But we are there and we're going nowhere. So you're right. So if 
on Peponi Road, which you call also the leafy suburbs, and God rest Professor Wangari Madai, if in peace, if she had not protected Karura Forest, do you think we'd have Karura Forest today? No. You would have 45-story skyscrapers there uh, where we go to Karura to walk, everybody goes to Karura to walk, she protected. But that Peponi Road, see, see buildings are, are, are sliding. Mm -hmm. When with the heavy rains, yeah. because you're building so close to the edge and so beacon to beacon and back to back, this city, Nairobi, cannot take this pressure. Mm. Nairobi cannot take this pressure. But we need enough people, whether you live on Peponi Road, Raptor Road, whether you're in Pipeline, Ndemi Road, Likoni Lane, Mbazi, Odaya, Nyeri Road, Haveru. We need to rise up and say enough that's why here i'm throwing down the gauntlet i'm like governor sakaja speak to us and tell us how it is mm -hmm. because if you want to blame previous regimes fair enough because we know it didn't start with him but he's the chief accounting officer of nairobi right now and we're holding him to account and we're going to indict him and this is going to be his legacy and he's part of and i'm also told on on, on x so you voted for this government of course i did and when i was here with you spice mm -hmm. fm i said all the more reason to hold this government to account. Mm. I voted for you, you're going to do the right thing or I will call you out because I want you to succeed. If you have said that these are the things you're going to do for the people of Kenya, I'm going to be here reminding you every day. I'm not afraid and no one can shut me up because of how I voted, it's my democratic right. But, but mm. this business of trying to silence people saying mm. you can't speak or you voted, Sakaja, we are in the same political party and I'm still calling you out. Okay. You've, you've gone to the Environment Tribunal. Yes. Where else? What are the steps? So, so you started there, you've gone on to social media. What are the steps? And if anybody would like to join you in this our march, our where can they find you? Our particular case, mm -hmm. the one against Zhejiang on Demi Road, mm -hmm. we are the National Environment Tribunal. We have our mention and preparation for hearing um, on the 31st. So that, that process is ongoing. It's been very slow, I must say, because now Zhejiang is at floor number 10. And what happens is it moves so slowly, by the time they hit the 18th story, they say, now what do you want us to do? You want us to pull the building down? There's a lot of money. And the liability will come back to where? To the county, Anema. Mm -hmm. Even if we win our case, the contractor, the developer will say, we were given legitimate permission. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to hold anyone liable, go back to the county. Mm -hmm. So there is that. But I would tell people, organization, neighborhood associations are very powerful. Mm -hmm. Likoni Lane, on Haveru, on Bazi, they are very powerful. On Demi Road, Kilimani Project Foundation, wherever you are, be part of your neighborhood association. It's not just about tackling road construction. It's about a whole bunch of things. And we have not even talked about these road constructions that then give rise to the Airbnb culture and the, 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 the decay of the social fabric that we are currently mm. seeing, including the very real and present danger of femicide or children overdosing. Because you have all these buildings, they're not being bought, no one is renting them, so they become Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's another story for another day. But be active in your little neighborhood and speak up. And maybe we'll go the class action route. Maybe it's time to hold all these rogue developers, be they Chinese, Somali, wherever you are, for Kikuyu, Kalenjin, whoever, we're going to call you out. We're going to call you out and hold you to account for the destruction of this city. And that's where we should go. But we want to inspire enough, enough, enough anger. It, not just anger, it's, it's, it's more like concern or righteous rage, righteous mm. rage, not anger, because anger is counterproductive and reactionary, righteous rage to say, we are going to make a difference and we're going to protect our city. Where are the libraries? Where are the mm. green spaces? Even if you go to London, where you have council and subsidized housing, you will still find a little to park there where yeah. the kids can play. Yeah. You'll still find sidewalks where you can, you can walk with your kids safely from point A to point B. What happened to that? When we violate every, and I agree, I agree. We, we started, we are starting at the, uh, we are ending at the beginning. Mm. It starts with us, but I will not allow those who come and circumvent and, and manipulate. Because at the end of the day, that Chinese developer is affecting me who never gave them permission in the first instance. Mm. So I have to speak up because my issue is that when I take them to court, I'm taking them to court. But the other case, you may attend, mm. is what is happening. How did our city happening. rot to this extent? And mm. we're going to hold everybody accountable. And some buildings must come down. If, Heads if, must if roll. Be, yeah. People must go to jail. They must be prosecuted and they must go to jail. Order, sanity must be restored. In the sanity. City. That must was the campaign slogan for, for Johnson Sakaja. 
order. Laz, and, laz, and he's saying lazima iwak. Lazima iwak. Lazima afuate Let's bring back sheria. order to the city. Yeah. Yes. There's a lawyer called Alfred Ndambiri. He's been here before. Mm. He's also one of those who's campaigning against this mushroom in developments in Parklands. Maybe all these people, including yourself, should all come together. We should. Yes. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to see you all again. Kumbe nilikuwa ni mewa miss. See? Imagine. Sana. Imagine. <laughs> Regular. Cherotich Sei is an active citizen. She's been our guest this hour. Thank you very much. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.